What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Ace Attorney Investigations. Yeah, that's right, Ace Attorney Investigations. Okay, so last time we found out that a detective, Buddy, Buddy something, was murdered in our office, uh, Edgeworth. And we are meeting, we're talking with the prosecutor Portsman, who we know murdered him. Just gotta prove it somehow. I want you to catch this scene on film for me. My final farewell to my partner Jim. I should probably give them some space. Hmm, now I can go over here though. Ah, your jacket, sir! What's it doing on the floor? It must have fallen off the wall when the killer tried to threaten me by firing around. Wait a minute! That would have been two rounds. Interesting. So the killer not only shot the victim, but they shot your jacket as well? They dared to shoot the ultra-special jacket that you made your prosecutor prosecutorial debut in? What if they had shot through it? It would have been a disaster. It's not worth getting worked up over, Detective. Not when there's something more here. Like what? I take it you haven't noticed it yet, Detective. There is a giant contradiction right here in front of us. Really? Oh my, yes. One bullet fired, two bullets found. Mm -hmm. Did I say contradiction? He must be rubbing off on me. I'm starting to sound like him. God knows who he's talking about. But I have my own methods, and I will conduct this investigation my way. When the scene before me contradicts a piece of evidence, or seems off, that's when my deductive skills come into play. First, I have to find the spot that holds the contradiction. Right there, duh. So the killer not only shot the victim, but they shot your jacket as well. To prove that the gun was real, no doubt. And two shots, I'd have been afraid of someone hearing either one of them. It's the middle of the night, detective. Further, my office walls are soundproof. The culprit must have been very confident that no one would hear. This is it. This bullet hole is where the contradiction lies. That's what I pointed at first! When I spot something that's off, I should touch the- yes. And when I have found sufficient proof to prove the contradiction, I present it. This is how I do things. Bam! Eureka! 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 This bullet hole is the contradiction. What do you mean, sir? It's elementary. I'm Sherlock Holmes now. Two shots were fired in this room, Watson. The first felled the victim. And the second felled this frame. Hey, that's right. However, this gun was only fired once. That's true, too. Which means that one of these two bullets was fired from a different gun. Did the killer have another gun prepared for tonight? Hmm, another handgun. By the way, I noticed something, sir. Yes? What's that thing sticking out from behind the frame? Ah, that! It's a secret safe! A secret safe? Oh, I smell money! I'll spare us the trouble and just say it. Nothing like what you're imagining is inside. Now, if you could kindly move this frame out of the way. Roger that! Achoo achoo! Talk about Dusty. I suppose that's what happens when I'm not here to dust it once in a while. I had no idea there was a safe here. I'd kept it clean for you, sir. So when did you put this thing in? It wasn't something I had installed personally. Every prosecutor's office has one. Really? I had no idea. Well, only prosecutors are supposed to have knowledge of their existence. So what's inside Mr. Edgeworth? Right now, nothing. We only use them to store especially important evidence when a trial is in session. That's it? Talk about squashing my hopes and dreams. Secret safe data jotted down in my organizer. Interesting. I wonder if there's a gun inside. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Hmm? Now this is odd. You found something, sir? This keypad. Don't you find it to be d too clean? Yeah, there's a thick layer of dust all around it, but not on the keypad itself. You there, the forensic scientist. Yes, sir. 
Could you please dust this area for fingerprints? You got it, sir! I couldn't find, let alone lift, a single print. Looks like it was wiped down well. All the fingerprints on this have been wiped clean off. Hmm. It's nice hearing all these old sound effects again. As I thought. It appears that logic is the only way around this setback. Time to rationally and calmly play Connect the Dots with the information we have. Don't mind if I do. But what do we have so far? Hmm... The killer's goal! That must be it. Let's go for it. Come on! I believe I figured out what the murderer was after. Well, what is it, sir? The fact that the safe was wiped clean of fingerprints suggests that the criminal had at least attempted to open my safe. Making the culprit's motive for breaking and entering theft, I believe. <gasps> Did the murderer think he was in a different office? Did he think he was in his own office? That would make sense, then. He probably thinks he's in his office. I wonder if knowing that the motive behind this break-in was theft. Changes what the other pieces of information can tell me about this crime. Hmm. Interesting. These? I don't think the order matters, does it? Oh no! The pieces don't fit together quite right. Hold on, let me see if order matters. That's one thing I can do is if I do this, just the exact two, uh, exact same ones, I'm just gonna see if order matters. If the movie theft is first. Okay, no, that doesn't matter, all right. All right, all right, I got it. I'm gonna take the hit, all right. Which means it's signs of a struggle and the theft, but I don't know, very strange. There is a possibility that the files splayed on the floor are not the result of a struggle between the victim and his killer. Oh? You mean like it could be from when the killer tried to find something? Ah, precisely. We need to figure out if any of the files have been stolen. Yes, sir. I'm going to shell files like you've never seen before, even at the library. Sure. Let's give that a try. Mmm, so it wasn't actually a struggle. Why do all the good ones always die young? He's still talking about this? Surely you must ponder what every once in a while, Mr. Edgeworth. No matter how much we lament, the dead will not come back to life. All we can do is search for the truth. And? So what are we supposed to do? How do we go about finding the truth? First, we calmly restore the files to their rightful place. You got it! Here, let me help! So this file goes here, and that book goes there. You sure know a lot about where things go, despite it being Mr. Edgeworth's office. Because I'm the one who keeps it tidy, pal. Done. It would appear that the murder was definitely committed here. Hmm, interesting. Also, I recognize the song. It's like, it's kind of like a remixed version, but I do recognize it from the originals. So he, he rested his arms back on the shelf and then fell to the floor. Ugh, the bloodstains on the bookshelf are still fresh. I suspect that the victim was killed in a standing position, hence the prints on the shelf. And then the guy fell onto the floor, right? The blood on the floor is kind of grossing me out. Detective, I don't have the time to deal with your weak stomach right now. <sighs> but you know I'm no good with blood, sir. I'm certain there's something wrong with this picture. Well, how about the splatter, for example? This isn't right. Wait, the bullet hole. Wait, okay, hold on. Let me use the stylus to right over. Examine first. So this is where the bullet lodged itself after it went through the victim. For the bullet to be lodged so squarely in a file spine. Oh, <gasps> the books are, the order's wrong? The white ones were on top? Well, it's to be lodged so squarely in a file spine. Indicates that the files were ransacked after the shooting had occurred. 
Then I guess the victim was moved because he was in the killer's way. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Is it? I don't know! Is it? No, it's not wrong. Shoot. Oh, man. Crap. Okay, okay. Okay. Let's see what else we can find first. The victim's handprints. He must have tried to support himself with his hands here after being shot. There are prints on the floor, too. Those must have been made when, unable to stay standing, he dropped to the floor. Oh, that doesn't help me very much. It definitely is this one. It has to be. I just need to figure out why. It must be the, the, the body, then. This one. What is this? Oh, it must be this one. Come on! What do you mean, sir? Nice, I got it. You don't see? Quite simply, the bullet hole itself is too low. If the victim was shot in the stomach, the hole should be much higher up. But what if the guy was shot while he was sitting or lying down, sir? Well, then his handprints wouldn't be up there, would they? That would be illogical! The victim leaned against the shelf here after being shot. Which suggests that he was standing when he was shot. And then that means... Wait, what does that mean, sir? It means you need to use your brain every once in a while instead of mine, detective. In any case, it means someone made a faulty assumption. And it was from this mistake that our current contradiction was born. What is the faulty assumption that caused this problem with the bullet hole's position? The order of the files! Ah. I believe the order of the files is a bit off. You mean I put them back in the wrong order just now? Hey, actually, I think the labels on the files are wrong, sir. Oh? Yeah, you see here how the files that were shot begin with the number zero? What are those doing all the way down there after one, two, and three? That's really weird. Actually, the way they are organized now is the correct order. They are exactly as I see them in my mind's eye. But the numbers are all out of order. Those white binders are special, so they are arranged a little differently. But from this, we know that the files were not in this order when the crime occurred. Aha! So that's it! I believe the killer made the same incorrect assumption as you just did, Detective. Let's rearrange the files in numerical order and see what we find out. Do you think it'd be okay to prop the body back up to how it was before it was moved? They finished processing the crime scene, so I don't see why it wouldn't be. If you please, Detective Gumshoe. As I suspected, the bullet hole is now where it should logically be. The killer went through my files first before shooting Mr. Fate. Interesting. And then put the files back in numerical order, I guess. Exactly. And then proceeded to shoot the victim. But why would someone kill a man and then look through your files one more time? Puzzling indeed. The files were thrown into disarray twice. Once before and once after the crime, but why? The culprit rearranged my files twice. Hmm. That is confusing. Now the crime scene is as it was the time of the murder. Time to give it another look. As I suspected, the bullet hole is now where it should logically be. And we figured out that the killer went through your bookshelf twice. Indeed. There are many things the killer did that don't make sense. But to figure out the whys, we need more information. <gasps> Wait! That's it! This. It's a message from him that he wrote with his fingers. What is that? It says gumshoe! It says gumshoe! Why does it say gumshoe on there in blood? Oh, we got it right away. Impressive. I'd, I'd say it's some incredible incriminating evidence. Yes, indicative of criminal activity indeed. No, wait. There's got to be some mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me. Say something, sir. 
It appears that one of my files was stolen. Is that all, sir? What about me and my situation? Is this what the killer was really after? Hmm, stolen file discovered in my office. Yay, my health is back. Looks like Jim was able to leave us the name of his killer in the end. And this most important message managed to reach us. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. You can't be terribly pleased to hear that your beloved partner is the guilty party. If you are going to accuse Detective Gumshoe of being the culprit, I sincerely hope you have some proof to back it up. Jim's words, they're more than enough, wouldn't you say? If that's how you want to play it, then at least allow me to understand your reasoning. You got it. I don't like this one bit. There's something strange about this man's attitude. And there must be some sort of flaw to his logic waiting for me to dig out. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you gonna do? What I always do in court, I'm going to cross-examine him. One way or another, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, expose the flaw in his logic with this technique. Oh, how do you do that? Can you explain it to me, sir? Might as well. All right, first I listen to the witness's testimony. If I find a flaw in the testimony, something that contradicts the evidence. I open the organizer and present the piece of contradictory evidence. To present something, I simply touch the present button, but that's old news. But it's not like there's gonna be a flaw in their testimony every time, right? Correct. And at those times, I need to press the witness by touching the press button. Sometimes, by pressing, I can draw out new information and new or modified testimony. I think I get it, sir! I'll be sure to try this technique out during investigations, too. Come on, Gumshoe, you've been seeing this for years. Very well, I'll even show you how it's done. Now watch carefully. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, ma, Detective Gumshoe! You stole Jim's gun from him and shot him dead. Further, you messed up the files to make it look like you had committed the theft itself. Ah, instead, that's when you moved Jim's body that was sitting in front of the bookshelf. But thanks to that, you didn't notice the bloody letters that his body was hiding. And it will be his final words to you that he... B brought to justice. I really messed up that sentence. I clearly need to go to bed. You intend to argue that the victim's dying message points to his killer. I can hear Jim's voice and he's calling for his killer's arrest. <laughs> Are you sure you're not mishearing his words, Mr. Portsman? There's no way Detective Gumshoe is the culprit here. I will find the flaw in this man's logic and expose it with credible evidence. Rebuttal. Mm. Detective Gumshoe, uh, I, I can read this. Oh, it's been a while since I've done an Ace Attorney game, like uh, the actual... The, I don't do the trials too often anymore. Detective Gumshoe, you stole Jim's gun from him and shot him dead. You know, there's something I've been meaning to ask. What is it? Why do you call the victim Jim, when clearly his name is Buddy Faith? Isn't it obvious? Jim is the perfect name for my companion. Jax and Jim don't do, don't those two go together like peanut butter and jam. But Jim isn't even close to the guy's real name. Well, Jacks and Buddy, that just sounds off somehow. Besides, he was the third of a bunch of guys I decided to nickname Jim. He talks about the victim like he was his pet. Further, you messed up the files to make it look like you had committed the theft itself. Hold it. Do you really think it was necessary to dishevel my shelves twice to do that? That's true. Okay, then maybe his real intent was theft. Hey, are you accusing me of stealing something from Mr. Edgeworth? It's a possibility. Maybe your salary's been cut so much that life is getting a little too rough to handle. I'll have you know that I eat three square meals every day, pal. Okay, so all three of them are happen to be instant noodles, but... Poor thing. What an evil prosecutor you are paired up with. And what a motive, no? Interesting. You know, I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna go back. I think the issue is this one. 
Well, you know what? I don't... It, just, it doesn't make sense, because he has his own gun. They're all detectives. But, it's been 20 minutes, so I'm gonna end this video here. So stay tuned for the next one, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!